I'm honestly not quite sure why I keep making these plans when I usually only stick to 50% of the plan. Hey everyone, welcome back to Andrew's Wizardly Reads, and as always guys, I am Andrew, and today guys, we are talking about the spooky season TBR for 2024, the books that I am going to read, hopefully, in October. Before we get into that, please like this video and subscribe to the channel, as it does help the channel grow, and you can check the description box down below for links to all my social media, including information about the Patreon, the Discord, all of that is there for you to explore. And I've got a stack of what I would like to say is, frankly, books that are on the spookier side. I have very little fantasy here. Do I have? I have a couple fantasy books here. Um, but most of this is spooky adjacent. Um, let's start with the one that I don't currently have, actually, is Brian Lumley's Necroscope. Out of nowhere, I found Nico from Nico's Book Reviews has had Necroscope on his radar. And he was like, hey, you want to read it? I want to read it. We should buddy read it. And I was like, cool. I've been wanting to read it, but I don't actually own it. So um, I'm currently waiting for my Pango Books order to come in so that I then have a physical copy to enjoy. Uh, I, I've heard this is more of a slower burn sort, sort of a vampire horror story, but I'm going to be here for it. I'm going to give it a good shot. It's supposed to be like a truly monstrous like 1980s style of vampire story. So fingers crossed I end up liking that and uh, we have a good buddy read. So that's the one that I don't currently have yet just because it hasn't been delivered. Um, I bought it like, I don't know, 48 hours ago. Next up, uh, we've got these three books. Um, and these are the fantasy books. Three books? Three books. Cool. Next three books are our fantasies. Everything else is going to be uh, horror to thriller adjacent. We've got Kagan the Damned by Jonathan Mayberry. And I've been acquiring quite a bit of Jonathan Mayberry here recently because of John from Talking Story. He seems to really enjoy Jonathan Mayberry's uh, writing on top of the fact that like the de facto audiobook narrator for Jonathan Mayberry is Ray Porter so yes please I'm here for that I love Ray Porter he's a fantastic narrator and so I've heard this is kind of like a darker fantasy following like witches and stuff like that and I figured there's I've been wanting to read this now for like six months and it's about time that I just fit it into the TBR, and I do plan on doing the audiobook along with this, so uh, I want to get that Ray Porter goodness in my ear holes. And so, yeah, we've got Cake and the Damned by Jonathan Mayberry. Very, very excited for that. And then I still wanted to fit in a review copy, and one of my review copies that I have is Lily Ann Crow's Dust of Dreams, or excuse me, Dreams of Dust. I don't know why I read that backwards. A Will of the Wayfinder. And this one just seems like it's a little bit on the darker side of fantasy. So it says, The Immorta, the Immorta, the Immortal Lika heal the wounds of the fractured world, but when the spirits of nature are silenced, Thela Swift's life is about to change. The inexperienced Wayfinder sets out on a first mission to explain, to explore the untamed wilds of Corinth. But when he finds a band of sword heroes to uncover the cause of the ominously deserted village, the hunt will lead Thaniel far from home into the remnants of a long-forgotten civilization and dangers beyond his dreams. This just sounds dope. And uh, I've been wanting to get to it for a while, ever since I accepted it for review. And then we've got this sucker. You've heard me talk about this sucker many, many times here on the channel. And it's White Wolf. And what I did this last month, and I may do again next month, is on the Patreon, I have been doing these polls. And it's like a bracketed poll uh, with, like, uh, I'm going to try and start doing, like, a video explanation of the books that are in the polls, poll so that then the patrons know what they're voting for. Which I did the second week, but not the first week. So, just growing pains on new processes on the Patreon. But... Uh, the bracket kind of just went through, and we have right here White Wolf that ended up winning the bracket, at least the last time I looked. And this is book number 10, Indranai. And I've already read about 20% of this two months ago, and I got scared and ran away. But from what I read, it was really good. I need to just get up the gumption to wrap up Dranai. I just need to get it done. 
and I'm very excited to come back to White Wolf because the patrons apparently want me to just stop belly aching about it and just get it read. So I'm going to do that for them. And then the rest is the Spooky Season books, which I'm very, very excited for. Um, historical Fiction Spooky. We have got Robert McCammon's The River of Souls. This is, I believe, the fifth, yeah, the fifth Matthew Corbett book. And it is probably one of the smaller ones. It's been a while since I read a Matthew Corbett, but it hasn't been ungodly long. I think it was March or April that I did Pro Providence Writer, and I really enjoyed Providence Writer. But I didn't love the ending of Providence Writer, so hopefully we can start kind of course correcting uh, here in the fifth entry. But man, like, look at that green cover. Isn't that just stunningly gorgeous? I don't know, this very shade of green is just kind of eerie. I really, really like it. And then we've got somebody with, like, face paint on, and it's just, oh, gives me the shivers. Uh, I'm very, very excited for this one. Uh, and then this one I've also kind of sampled a little bit. This is The September House by Carissa Orlando. And essentially what drew me to this one is uh, I'm currently in the process of house hunting. And whenever I go, like, into a house hunting mood, I start watching a lot of renovation shows. And so, like, I read the first chapter of this through my library. And it's these people there who are just house hunting. They find this house and they're like just checking out the moldings and like this older house. And they're just enamored with the house. And the realtors behind them just being like, oh, and then there's the deaths. One was natural. It was like 100 years ago. And then or one was unnatural. That was like 100 years ago. And then the rest seemed to be natural. And they're just like, uh-huh, uh-huh. They're not listening to them because they're enamored with like the architecture of the house. And that just really appealed to me. So I'm going to try and fit in the September house. I've never read Carissa Orlando, but uh, it seems to have like a haunted house sort of feel to it, and I want to check that out. Then we've got right here one I have been dying to read ever since I started watching Mike's book reviews, and he did his Into the Multiverse series. Um, he did a specific group of series that was about, I think he did like four videos on different seasons, if not more. I think he did like an overall general review for it, or why you should read for it, and then he did like an analyzation of each story, and I could be there could be more, I don't know. But that was kind of when I first really started tuning into Mike. And I think I was watching him a little bit before that. But that was that was when I was just like, oh, King. Yeah, I, I really used to like King. And I still haven't read different seasons. And I know a little bit about this book from watching Mike's videos. But it's long enough ago that I've forgotten certain details. And I'm just, I'm very, very, very excited for this collection of four novellas. And uh, it's not the only king that's going to be in this video, but I'm very excited to get to this. I look forward to just being scared out of my pants or being creeped out, what have you. This is going to be a good time. I am certain of it. And then speaking of king, um, when I read The Talisman, I learned about Peter Straub, and then I heard that Peter Straub had passed away. I think it was last year or the year before. It was very recent that he has since passed on. And uh, I heard, like, I, I went looking, not I heard, but I went looking for, like, what was considered one of his best works. And this one kind of popped up. This is Ghost Story. This is supposed to be, like, three older gentlemen sitting around this haunted house telling themselves ghost stories while around them spooky stuff is happening. And it just sounds awesome. So I'm very excited for this. Um, I am fully expecting to be scared witless. I've got more Peter Straub. On the off chance that this really blows my socks off, I can explore a little bit more of his uh, backlog. I don't, I don't plan on exploring all of it. Uh, some of it just kind of like I'm like mm, that. That seems a little too freaky for me. Uh, I don't really get into true crime, serial killer type of stuff all that often, and he seems to have some of that in his backlog. But this one, this is like a ghost story, so I'm very excited for that. And then you knew Joe Hill was going to show up. I've read a Joe Hill book at least one for the last three months, and it's time for The Fireman. And this one is like post-apocalyptic. It kind of gave me vibes of like Fahrenheit 451, but not really. I don't think they're burning books. I think people are catching fire and spontaneously combusting, which reminds me of kind of like the manga slash anime like Fire Force. Hopefully a lot less horny than Fire Force though, because that, that, that I stopped watching that very quickly. But uh, this has just appealed to me ever since I heard about it. And I'm very excited to get into more Joe Hill because I think... No, I've still got Heart Shape Box, um, which I'm planning to read the month after this one in November. Uh, but that will be the last of all of my... Of all of Joe Hill's main standalone novels that I think I will have need to have read. 
And then of course I want to get lock and key and into his collections and stuff like that. But anyway, it's the fireman's turn. I loved horns last month. I really loved 20th century ghost the month before that. And, uh, the year before that, I really enjoyed those for too. So, uh, yeah, Joe Hill is quickly becoming one of my favorite authors. And then I don't know if this is going to be the one that makes the list. This is one I'm very hesitant to read. Um, but I've got multiple books now from this author, uh, You'll see my next book haul. Uh, we've got Grady Hendrix's uh, How to Sell a Haunted House. And from what I understand about Grady Hendrix is it's horror with a lick of humor into it. There's always a little bit of cheekiness to that horror, which just for some reason appeals to me, including even in the name How to Sell a Haunted House. Now, because I'm reading the September house and this one, I don't know how multiple haunted house stories are going to vibe with me throughout this month so some of those are probably subject to change this one being one of them but because i've also got like uh, i'll give you a, a sneak peek i got the um southern book club's guide to slaying vampires and i got horror store uh in my net upcoming book haul and so that's all grady hendrix so i could probably dip into either one of those i do want to read a grady hendrix i just don't know which one i'm going to land on so this is kind of a placeholder placeholder i would like it to be this one we shall see and then finally, the final King book. We have got End of Watch. I really enjoyed coming back to Finders Keepers last month, and it just absolutely knocked my socks off. I know a lot of people say this is the weakest of the trilogy. I kind of know why it's supposed to be the weakest of the trilogy. Um, from what I hear, this one takes a little bit more into a monster, supernatural sort of spin when it was supposed to be a crime thriller uh trilogy just a true crime homicide detective mystery uh hard bake type of deal i'm pre-informed so my expectations have been shifted i'm already braced for that so i think i'm gonna be okay here with end of watch it still might, may not end up being my favorite but again i am excited to finally close out the bill hodges trilogy so then i can read the outsider and i can read holly and i can read if it bleeds and stuff like that uh, to kind of catch up within that specific storyline. Um, so these are the books that I am planning to read next month. I think it's a great lineup. Let me know what your lineup is in the comments section down below. But as you can see, we've got a nice, big, thick stack of books. And I think this is going to work out beautifully. But that is all I've really got for you today, guys. So till next time, peace out. Stay magical. Bye. And as always, I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons. Thank you for supporting my passion and my hobby. It means the world to me.